All right, we're back. Where are we going? Uh, I think we're going to either the police department or Edgeworth. Let's try with the police department first. Oh! Okay, something here. At the criminal affairs department. Hey, Mr. Wright. Look who's standing at the chief of the detective's desk. It's Police Chief Gant. And you're sure this is all? Hmm. You know what it means if there's anything missing? Sir, I'm just... I'm sure it's the most likely totally perfect. We checked all of his drawers, lockers, garbage cans, bags, coat pockets, hats. Under his seat cushion, behind his computer monitor, and inside his personal coffee machine. Are we talking about Meekins here? Or somebody else? Because if Meekins has a personal coffee machine. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's at least good for Meekins. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you do call me right away, deal? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. We'll scout the place again, sir. The chief of detectives looks a little flustered. Well, yeah, Gant. Seems all nice and cheery, but he'll kill you instantly. Well, kill your job, I should say. Like, he seems to make yeah, those kind of threats. He is the chief of police. <laughs> right, oh my boy, how you been, swim much? There's a difference between chief of police and, oh, you fucked up, you're fired. Like, there's a difference between those <laughs> things, dude. No, I had, I did have a boss before that was like that, where if you fucked up in a certain way around them, you'd be fired immediately. Ooh, okay. Or publicly humiliated and then fired. One of the two. Oh, oh, that, that sucks. Public humiliated. That, humiliated. That is a very hard way to go. Well, public within the business, but yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. Oh, ho, ho, Chief Gant, reporting for duty, sir. Why the fuck am I talking like this? Uh, why are you saluting him, Mr. Wright? I don't know. This music is so ominous. Well, he seems to be a very big guy. Um, is Edgeworth going to be okay? Oh, Worthy? Oh, you know. They're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. And nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Aha! <laughs> yep, well, they've had no end of trouble with the boy since last year. I'm sorry I saved him from his evil adoptive father, I guess. You mean, the incident on Gord Lake? Where we had the hillbilly, whatever her name was, uh... That's a good, that's a good stuff an accent you do there. <laughs> I actually don't know what her last name was. Holy shit. Yeah, I forgot that too. It's been a while. I think she makes a return later, if I'm remembering of course our two videos. She does. Of well, course yeah, she does. she's a great character to voice. <laughs> Unfortunately, Old Bag also makes a return, and I want to shoot myself when that happens. <laughs> it doesn't look good having a top prosecutor sit in the defendant's seat, does it? And you, you got someone else found guilty in that case, right? Right? Oh, don't I normally do that? Von Karma. Allegedly was undefeated in his 40-year career. With one, with two losses. One of them by Worthy's father, who was killed in an elevator shaft. Why are you and doing that with your me, hair? And by me, who was not killed in an elevator shaft. Why are you doing that with your hair, Gant? But in court, you fixed it so he was caught for forging evidence. All you prosecutors forge evidence. Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of a turmoil, you might say. <laughs> I, they do just about anything to restore their reputation. Like forging evidence? <laughs> now, depending on what that inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. W what? It's not right on, I tell you. The detective getting killed in that turf, too. I mean... There being the prosecutors, I assume. Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. Emma, nothing is impossible. 
Except Jewel being an absolutely loving and adoring cat, except in the morning when she's trying to kill me because she's hungry. <laughs> that is the only time she is loving and... Well, it's a cat. Alright! Um, cut it here. I'll be right back. So, did you want to read this? Uh, well, scientifically speaking, I think it's impossible. Now it's done. Yes, Bob, what's the evidence? That's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. What evidence is this? <laughs> no, not right. I can't give away all our secrets just like that. And is in particular, well, it's a little sensitive, and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets. Can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just to keep it, keep the chief of de detectives' traps shut. Ah, he was the one you were picking on earlier? Huh? Well, you saw it? Whoops! I, w I wonder what it was that he wanted the chief of detectives to do. Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Hmm. So invent- uh, Am I supposed to present something? Oh, I think examine the chief of detectives behind them. Really? Let me already examine that dude. Yeah, but that was before this. Uh, oh, sorry, you had to see that. Um, what exactly did the two police want you to do? Well, see over there? That's Goodman's desk. He wanted me to check it for anything that might be a clue. Or oh, it was Goodman's coffee machine. They took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So nothing belonging to the second Goodman is still here. Of course not! Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure, why not? It's not important. He didn't even finish writing it. It's a lost item report, but it's only half complete. A lost item? I the detective good did Detective Goodman lose something? The day on it is February twenty-first. Better make a note of that just in case. Reference document dated can only be submitted by the chief of police. Or to the chief of police. I should really get back to investigating the police department crime scene. Can we examine? Oh, Can we examine that thing? What did he lose? ID 59. Well, he scratched out the 9. Hmm, there's not much about this at the moment. I think we can- You think that implies he doesn't know his own ID number? Oh! He might not- yeah, he might, he might not be able to remember his own ID number. Because, I'll be honest, unless you use an ID number frequently, you're not going to remember. Oh yeah, like, that makes a lot of sense. Like, I know at one of my old jobs, I technically had an ID number, but we use it so rarely for things. It's like, hey, what's your ID number? Uh. And then you have to face up the card that's on. <laughs> I mean, I used it so rarely, it was at home like 90% of the time. <laughs> it's like, hey, what's your ID number? I don't know. It's not here. Well. So. Oh, there we go. Okay. Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you a favor. Mm, well, I never thought the day would come when Riley would ask me for help. We've met today. He's probably been keeping an eye on you. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. Oh, he's staring. All right, ho. Actually, I'm sorry, I don't need to investigate it at all. <laughs> Right, oh please. Do I look like a selfish man? You look like you're gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> huh? Heck, if anyone asks me, sir, can I borrow $50? I give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate room to your heart's content. <laughs> Knock yourself out. It just goes to show, you never know until you ask. 
And for you, and for you here, you can borrow this. Uh, hey, this is a detective's ID card, isn't it? That's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. Uh, yes, sir. It's an honor. You just run along and do your best now. Later, folks. He's such a jolly man. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty cool on my label, doesn't it? Yes, Fink, a real ID. You seem happy? Yes, sir, because, sir, we can go into the evidence room now, sir. At least you don't have a megaphone. I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. Yeah, never take her to the military. <laughs> That's just going to be even worse. <laughs> I assume here? And I suppose we can use the ID card, Swinter? I see examine. The evidence room is beyond that door. And we have the ID card from Chief Gant. You know what I'm curious about? If Detective Goodman's ID would work right now. Because from a security point of view, the instant he died, it should be disabled. Yes. But these people don't seem that competent. Yeah, I, I think it might still have worked. Let's just walk in. It won't open. Ah. Aha, the card reader is turned off. Oh. See? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well. What's made my Bambina sky so gray? O Officer Marshall! Why does it have to be him? You entered this room and wouldn't think it's Officer Marshall? Like, like look around you, this is so... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Why does it have to be him? Look for. As you may have surmised, this here's my saloon. Oh my god, yeah, he treats it like a saloon too. You know what would be the best part about Marshall? Is, like, he has a genuine southern accent. <laughs> but he practiced it so much and he was faking it the whole time. <laughs> so if he's just out and about not being a cowboy, he just talks like some ordinary person from LA. Oh yeah, that would be so weird, man. <laughs> Um, we are here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw! That card you got there on your chair? That's better than a sheriff's badge in these parts. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeehaw! Well, what you standing there for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's awaiting. Beep. Looks like the card reader's on again. While we're here, I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got no mind to tangle with you hombres. You're busy then. Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle with us hombres. Uh... Ah! What? Ah, Officer Marshall. You see? I lunch. <laughs> that smell. Ah, remind me of this. <laughs> That's <is> very safe lunch. <laughs> so, Officer Marshall, you're from Texas? Oh my god. Now, I just saw a special on television the other day. Is this from my baby? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, mister. What's this? What? What's wrong? A filet steak lunch? I see. I see. I don't know what's happening anymore. I don't see. I wonder what it means. Steak lunch given to Officer Marshall. All right, Bambina. You win. So, was that steak lunch some secret code word? Could have been. Or something between them? Could be. Because it's pretty common spy type of things to discreetly give people messages via food. Yeah, apparently that's a thing. Ask me from Okay, I, I don't think it was anything. I think he was just hungry. <laughs> Honestly, there still may have been something hidden. Like, okay, if I give you this, this food, it means this happened. If I give you this, it means this. It could just be that kind of code. That's true, but he still ate it. <laughs> well, duh. If you're given food as a message and you're hungry, you're going to eat that message. You don't need to pass it on, specifically for you. Finally, it seems like 
He's willing to talk! Okay, we can talk to him. Officer Marshall, you in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job, and I'm grateful for it. Actually, Officer Meekins at the detention center told us. His neck seems so tiny. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> ah, that poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong and call him Meekly. He told us something. He said that when the staffing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. But since I got demoted from detective two years ago. Well, it might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know. I'm a Texan through and through. <laughs> not a detective. So, what were you doing around 5.15 when the murder took place? Well, Bambina, I was not stabbing Detective Goodman, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> Well, I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed, Zippy. It's not a horse. Note, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Zippy. It's not a horse, I'm sure. There's no need for people here anyhow. These newfangled machines do a bang-up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system? I don't ta take to machines much. I'm a cowboy. Yeah, we can kind of tell. Kinda like that stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know. What's wrong with the stewed broccoli? Ah. Huh. Miss Dar told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. I also said that, Bambina. Why are you telling me this? That's a good point. Seriously, he just yeah, said that. Like, yeah, he said that. It was always my dream to be a rawhide wrangler on the scene of the crime. That's all gone now, like a drinking hole in a prairie fire. Like all these metaphors and figures of speech. You're still invested in the SL9 incident with Miss Star, aren't you? That was my case. It's all solved on the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. What kind of case was it anyway? We've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what actually happened. There are some things you're better off not knowing, Bambina. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago, the day of our case. That's right. The evidence transferals. Edgeworth was talking about the transferals, too. Hmm. I know what maybe two of the machines in here do. Only two of them? There must be a dozen! Like I said, Bambina, mean machines. Well, I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower with my steaks. What do you have against stewed cauliflower? The easiest ones to understand are these here security cameras. Those are the ones that Officer Meekins mentioned. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. That is terrible. That is a very terrible system. Well, it depends on how they define nothing happening. If by nothing happening, they mean manually, like, oh shit, something happened, and we have to manually save it, or if they mean something happened as it records movement, then that's saved. It depends how they set it up. Yeah, I suppose. But I know a lot of places have, like, at least, like, a week's worth of backlog. Because I don't know if you can deliberately save only movement or not. I think that really depends on the camera, and I don't think they have that little technology here. I don't know how well it would work nowadays. I think nowadays you can have a lot of motion. You could. It depends. Whatever. And Officer Meekin said Detective Goodman. Are they on one of, the ta of those tapes? I reckon they might be. You're the security guard and you reckon? It's a figure of speech. Ugh. One more thing. Or do we do this as Jackie Chan's uncle? <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> I didn't even say to do it right. It's been so long since I watched that show. Oh, that's ages, that. ages since I've watched it too. When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. You actually got one. 
Luckily, you already know that and got it from, uh, Chief of Police Gant. Thus, the card reader by the door. So this must be if we didn't talk to Gant after talking to the Chief and came here first. Yeah. The card reader leaves a record of every ID card that passes through. Oh! Ah! So this is the ID card. That is a terrible ID. 77777. <laughs> so this is Goodman. Goodman's ID was used at 514. Hmm. But unless they have a camera recording it, that's just an ID card. Yeah. We don't know what these other ones are. Hey, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambina. I can't show you more than that. Huh? I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. You talking about the Goodman number? It's probably Goodman. Maybe there's some way I can prove that record is tied to the stabbing? Yeah, because it's Goodman. Yeah, I figured so. out. Sorry, but could you explain what this whole transferal thing is about? We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They're kept here under the presiding detective supervision for two years. So we can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? So what happens to the evidence after two years? It goes to sleep forever in the underground vault at the county sheriff's department. Okay, at least they don't destroy it. Yeah. That would pissed me off because most places are like, you have to keep records for like a decade. You keep these records for as long as it requires. That's what we call transferal. We do it every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for old cases. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever. Dead. Never to be reopened again. Never to be reinvestigated. Except that you have a knife from the case. Oh yeah, we do. And that happened to SL9 two days ago. Hmm. Alright, so what do we present to him to prove it's the case? Do I just literally chuck this ID at him? It's, it's a start. Here, look at this. See this? This is the victim's ID card. Ah, the one that was on the ground in the parking lot. The number on this is 5842189. Officer, Officer Marshall, show us what that ID card record again. Look at the fourth number, it's a perfect match! But there's another one below it, at the same time. It was used at 514, right before the stabbing. What's more, there's only one of them cards in the world. So when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But wait, what did Officer Meekin say? Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing! Suddenly he pointed a knife at me! If he had his ID card then, why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekins? Alright, compadre. You win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. Ideas of all who entered the evidence room on 221. I've got an idea. Maybe I should show this list to other people with IDs here. We need to. Do I just throw it at him then? I suppose. Alright, so if I'm looking at this correctly, Detective Goodman never left. Assuming you need your ID, it goes two ways. I, I, it doesn't seem to show when you leave, by the looks of it. It only seems to show when you enter. We'll probably want to show this to Meekins. I'm curious who is 77777. I don't know, it's a terrible ass ID number. Well, show it to this guy, I suppose. He must have ID. The sheriff's back in the Wild West didn't place much faith in evidence. 
about the only thing they trusted was their shooting. Well, yeah, because it was the Wild West. And this is neither Wild nor West here. Aha! But that and this are two different things entirely. Uh, I guess so? I'm lost. Looks like we need some evidence to get anywhere with this guy. Nope. Okay. Okay. Before we go into the evidence room, I don't want to go there. I want to go to Meekins. Or at least see if he's available to talk to. I hate the roundabout way I have to get there. Yeah. Answers. And we show him. Meekins, 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 Meekins. Here. Here we go. Officer Meekins, could you take a look at this? Uh, I'm so, so, I really have no idea what it says. Okay, he's not allowed to. Interesting. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, I suppose we enter the evidence room then? I guess. That's weird. You'd think Meekins would recognize his own number. Yeah. Oh, actually, he might not, you know. <laughs> February 23rd, evidence room, sector 3. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. So this is the evidence room? It's really kind of a, like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. Nice try, Mr. Wright, but you can't scare me. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. She slapped him. I wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts on the head, pal. Is he not as big as I thought if a 16-year-old can smack him in the face? <laughs> Perhaps not. So, is it true what I heard? Rhino, please! Do I look like a selfish man? Heck, if anyone asks me, sir, can I borrow $50? I give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's content- to your heart's desire. Knock yourselves out. Yeah, it's true. So, Chief Police Gant. We'll loan anyone 50 bucks, <laughs> even me. That's what he got out of it. Oh, so that's what you were talking about. Actually, I was put in charge of in the investigation for today. Just for today? Boss for a day. But guess what? You got permission from the chief, so now you're a boss for a day. What? Uh, gee, thanks. First of all, you'll want to have this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yay for being boss. Okay. Oh, that helps. Let's have a look at it. Okay, what am I looking at? So this is the evidence room. This shows me nothing. Uh, it shows us the floor plan. Alright, so before we do any talking and investigating, I think we'll just save that for next episode since we're pretty much at the end. So. Fair enough. See you next time, peeps. See ya.